Hi Knitting Addicts, welcome to my living room and to this 12th episode of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and today we will talk mostly about knitting, yarn and also quite a lot about sewing as well. Uh, I hope you're fine. Um, well, I am, although it's like half past three in the afternoon and it looks like it's already seven. But that's all right, that's why the light is on and it might be a little yellowish. I don't know, I want to apologize in advance for that. Um, so, it's been two weeks since last time and um, quite a few things happened. I, at first, I welcomed uh, quite a few new, new subscribers and I want to thank you and welcome you all for joining me here. I hope that you will keep enjoying it. And uh, the second thing is that I actually really uh, went to second gear with my new sewing machine, so I didn't have that much time for knitting, but I did sew quite a lot. That's the thing with sewing, you know, it goes much faster than for knitting when you want to have a finished object, so obviously it was, um, it was a better choice for Christmas presents, so I did sew quite a lot lately and I did only finish one pro project with knitting. It's the puzzle wood mittens. Uh, the, the, the pattern is from is by Ruth Warwar and it was in the Woods magazine or book. <laughs> they were uh, actually they're surprisingly snug. I didn't expect the hand part to be that snug but uh, it means that there is not too much air, just enough to actually insulate from the cold and uh, uh, they won't get wrinkled or folded or anything when I grab the bicycle handle. And uh, the cuffs are actually pretty wide, which is good because it means that I can actually put them over my watch or over the sleeves on my pullover when I actually wear them down because it's just too warm in here to wear them down. But anyway. I always roll my sleeves. Um, they are knit with uh, Le Petit Lamb's Wool, Le Chebiche et Buche. Oh, I'm really sorry about the light. I think I got all white and overexposed. Um, the pattern is clear. I, I think I saw a few mistakes or stuff which I wasn't too comfortable with, so I did adapt it a bit. But generally speaking, it was really easy to follow. No, no big difficulty here. I knit them pretty fast. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy about them. Probably I will soak them and, and maybe st stretch them out a bit this weekend, but we will see. I'm, I'm not 100% sure yet. So that's the only finished knitting project which I have. Um, concerning sewing, the first thing I did was um, Small pouches, very easy. I found a tutorial online on the website of Alice Balis. Uh, they're just basically folded in thirds and yeah. It's just fine to put a pencil or, or um, mascara and whatever you want to put in your handbag and not lose it. Um, so I made three of them I think on the same evening it was super super fast and super easy the third one I offered already it went to a package for a swap which I sent this morning um yeah honestly really fine it's just uh straight stitches and and I'm really happy about them <laughs> I've been using both of them almost every day since I made them uh, the second thing which I saw last week was this. It's a stuffed toy which I made for the a little baby who's to come in a couple of months. So I could have waited, but I wanted to make it. I thought, why leave it in a kit, you know, just go for it. So yes, it was a kit. I bought it at the festival I told you about last time or the time before. It has plush in the back and a regular cotton in the front. It was pretty easy, although I would probably have done a few things differently, but found out that uh, plush is not actually the easiest thing to sew. It keeps slipping and getting stuck, so 
yeah there are a few wrinkles here which i'm not super happy about but then it's honestly it's for a baby she won't recognize that it has wrinkles it's just for me <laughs> my inner perfectionist um the only thing missing is a is a scarf because i need to borrow something to make a cord out of it i don't have one and i honestly don't really fancy buying one just for that so i will borrow it and um attach it afterwards um sorry it's hot it's a pukati um, star anise and cinnamon I'm not super confident with the pronunciation of anise but whatever uh the second thing which i made this week was actually a double project it was sewing and embroidery it's a um, small cushion in the shape of a cloud um, no specific pattern used and i embroidered the first name of the little girl who is who will receive it for christmas um, with very simple stitch and silver um, thread from dmc has plush on one side again i actually yeah i really like the plush the only really big problem with that one is that it left white stuff everywhere so the living room was just covered in white plush but just from from cutting the edges you know not from sewing or anything it hasn't lost anything since it's been done it's just that the uh, shreds were a pain um yeah so and the the second side is just um plain cotton with interfacing behind yeah the longest part to be honest was the embroidery because i'm not that used to freehand stuff you know i used i i printed i printed the name on paper and um and then i just transferred it you know with pencil on it but uh, still it's uh, it takes a bit of getting used to it you know um the next thing i made yeah, is a small another small pouch this one has a zipper it was sold as a kit by one upon une fois which uh, was present at a small christmas market i went to it has liberty and linen i actually like the fact that you're supposed to um to switch them you know not not put all the linen outside and the liberty inside although you could probably technically do that it's not it's, there is no obligation there obviously um it also has a freehand embroidery on it um honestly i could have centered it a bit better but then you embroider it before you make all the sewing and assembling so it's pretty hard to really center it um no big difficulty the kit has everything you need apart from the sewing machine and the thread but um, then again i wouldn't do that if i didn't have one you know a sewing machine i mean yeah it's it's nice it uh, zips like a charm and but i think i will offer it to someone um actually the kit came with so all the explanations with pictures and everything and also the hashtags which you could embroider afterwards on the, not afterwards, beforehand on the pouch. Yeah. Also, I made a pie bag. It's transport pies, obviously. I used it at work this week and it was really good. Uh, I used a tutorial from the blog Les Lubies de Louise. Um, originally, it has a, well, cross padding, you know, but, but it's um it's waxed fabric waxed cotton on this side and the outside is regular cotton but it could it kept slipping i don't know why but it has some some um what's the word not coming back anyway it's um it's a bit thick but it kept slipping and when i when i tried to saw the other in the other direction so i just decided not to uh, it's pretty easy. The only thing I changed in the pattern was the direction of this of the sewing of this because it was supposed to be sewn that way, but 
I didn't really get it to be honest. I assumed that it would be more convenient to just have it hang like this. It was very convenient. Um, you basically just pull the handle through and um, yeah, there you go. Obviously it holds better when it has a form inside, but yeah, all right. Give me a second, I'm going to try to fix the light. It's really annoying. I hope it will be better. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, I used waxed fabric inside so that it's easier to clean. And apart from that, I would probably have been faster if I had been more used to padding and everything. But I think I did quite well still for a first time. Yeah, I will probably make a second one somewhere somewhere in January because I still have enough of everything to make more. So. Can make a second one to offer. Um, I think that's all of it for the finished objects. I did work quite well, right? It's it's always small pieces, but then it's easier to make more, and it's pretty um, satisfying, you know, to have something finished. Because uh, for now, I'm not really ready to commit to really really long projects, to be honest, as far as sewing goes, at least. Um, I bought a couple of things, so I bought the kit to make this pouch, and the same day I bought this kit, which is um, to make a miniature embroidery um, brooch, so it has a hoop and um, all the attachments to go with it. I, you just, basically, you just need the fabric and, um, and the thread. I bought this one, which is gorgeous silver. From Auvera Soie. They have dozens of references, but they didn't have all of them when I bought it. Well, where I bought that where I bought that one, uh, there was there was a small um, demonstration. Not demonstration. There was a sample. Yes, there was a sample on their booth and um, it had beautiful metallic turquoise color. Uh, thread and I would have gone for that one but they were out of it too bad um, the other thing which I bought well I told you about last time but I hadn't received it yet it's the yarn from rain cloud and sage that comes from Germany uh, grown spun and dyed in central Germany to be honest I think they're probably the only ones to make it to, to do that you know but I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm really, really happy about it. It came basically the day after I filmed the previous podcast, but I was so busy I didn't have really time to. Uh, I didn't really have time to cast on anything new. I was very surprised because it is um, it is rustic wool. You know, it's very sheepy, but it doesn't smell like sheep at all, which is nice to be honest. <laughs> I expected it to be more. Natural, natural, basically. So this one is, well, it, it's the same yarn. It's called Origin. Uh, it's just the color that changes. I think they're completely out of the gray, but I'm not sure. I think so. It's 100% merino, three ply, um, 100 grams and 200 meters. So that's that's DK, I'd say. I'm looking forward to starting knitting with it. You know, I, I have something with more natural yarns at the moment. That's why I chose to make the mitts with uh, the lamb's wool uh, yarn from uh, Biche Bush because it's it's just more wooly, you know. It's it's not as soft as um, as um, superwash merino, for example. But yeah, it's just um, I have that kind of phase. Um, so I got two skeins of each and I will make sets of um, hats and mitts with them. Yeah. I didn't, well, I won't show you anything which I'm currently working on anyway today because it's basically the same as last time. It's all the other projects apart from the, from the mitts, everything which I have started lately. So the Donny Vake scarf or hap and uh, the Sirma scar shawl and the pavement sweater it's just stuff going on you know 
Ja. Um, so we won't see each other in three weeks, I'd say, because uh, we're taking off on Tuesday evening for two weeks away and we'll come back on Wednesday so I think I will need a couple of days to um, recover um, before I can actually film something new and so that will be beginning of January already I can't believe how, how fast the, the year went honestly um, I will be able to open the swap which I received uh, last time which so I can show you everything which is in it you're supposed to wait until Christmas but to be honest um, I won't take it with me on vacation so it will stay here and I will open it when we come back and I will show you next time I film a podcast um, oh yeah I didn't tell you but yesterday I um, indulged a bit uh, my friend emma who lives in uh, well close to boston has opened her e-shop and uh well she opened it yesterday and uh so i went for a kit of six skeins i will show you a picture basically it had my name on it literally you know i am um, it's called cher selma so dear selma and um yeah couldn't i couldn't pass it you know no, but um, to be serious, she has amazing yarns. She um, she dyes memories. That's how she says it. So basically, she gets her inspiration from pictures which she takes um, for the colors of her of her dyed yarn. Afterwards, it's really amazing. Honestly, I will put you a link below so you can uh, go and take a look yourself because um, she still has a lot of really really nice things uh well there will be one more knit night in paris well at least the ones which i attend the most regularly um on monday the 18th at Le, the nuage cafe in the fifth arrondissement so if you're in the area please feel free to join us we don't bite we don't eat people at least yeah no it's christmas soon so shouldn't we shouldn't in, indulge too much but anyway we're nice people and we welcome everyone so please uh, please join us if you're in the area the next ones will be in january there will be three instead of two i think gael who organizes them won't be there at the second one at lanti cafe so that will be the 15th of january but as always it's second tuesday at lanti cafe and uh, last Monday at the Nuage Cafe, but everything in on, on her Facebook page and on yeah on her Facebook page. I will put your link as well, so you can decide if you want to join us in case you go in Paris. You know, it's um, the thing is there are so many now. You know, it's it and it's amazing, but you just can't go to each and every one of them as much as you would like to because. Uh, I think for now they are not really overlapping you know but then you're at a different knit night every evening you know and i don't really have the time i can't really afford it either so um yeah but i think it's really amazing that more people actually come together to knit and 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 share that you know it's not just uh, old people it's also a lot of younger ones and uh yeah, it's a good way to um, meet new people, get together. That's how I made my first friends when I arrived in Paris um, five years ago now at knit night. So yeah, it's really cool. Anyway, um, well, I've seen it all. I think we've uh, we've gone through everything I wanted to tell you about and show you. Um, I want to wish you very, very nice holidays and well, a Merry Christmas if you celebrate it and a Merry whatever you actually celebrate with your loved ones, be them family or friends or both. Um, I wish you a lot of happiness and um, we say Guten Rutsch in German where I've been, where I've lived uh, for four years almost until six months ago. <laughs> I don't think that the French actually have an expression like that. It means have a good slide in the new year, you know. But 
yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to the next year. I can't wait for, to see what it what what it brings, you know. So I wish you a lot, a lot, a lot of good things. Um, in the meantime, well, until we see each other again, please comment, like, share, anything. And um, yeah, see you very, very soon. And enjoy your knitting. Bye.